So, a couple months ago, I was watching some reviews on the various boards available on the market at the time, and I came across an interesting video. This one to be exact. It's a custom remote called the Photon. Now, I don't love the design of this remote, but in the suggested video section, I saw something else. Another custom remote. This time, it was a thumb wheel styled remote. It's being developed by someone over on the eSkate.builders forum by the name of Solid Geek. He calls it the Firefly. Now it has a built-in OLED screen, you can see right there, that shows your speed, your battery, your distance traveled. It's a really cool remote. And so at the time, I decided right there and then that I wanted to build one of these for myself. And so I did. In this short series, I'm gonna show you to the best of my ability how I made my own. So, let's get started with a little bit about me first. So, I'm a communications major with just about zero DIY electronics experience. So my goal for the series is to make it as understandable as possible for someone like me to be able to build one of these at home. So before I start going over the preparation work, I'd like to mention a couple of tools you're going to need to complete this. We're going to particularly need a soldering iron, a hot glue gun, and a screwdriver. Some other tools you may want to use during the build, if you have them available to you, include a Dremel, your own personal 3D printer, and some helping hands for the soldering. Now with that out of the way, let's move right along. Here's the original post over on the eSkate Builders forum. It's got all of the information and links you'll need to complete the project right down here. First thing you're going to want to do is take a look at the Google spreadsheet right here with the parts list. The spreadsheet is just about everything that you'll need, but please make sure to take note of the quantity column and order the correct numbers of everything. Don't be an idiot like me and plan on building two remotes, but only order enough to build one and a half remotes. I also want to bring to your attention this page here with the list of uh, electronic components as well. This is the GitHub wiki for the remote and the parts list is a little out of date at the time of filming. The important things to note here are the electrolytic capacitors, the resistors, and a small switch. Future me here. So my receiver was having some issues and we found a fix on the forum. It uses a 0.022 microfarad capacitor. I bought mine at DigiKey here. What this does is it fixes a problem that the Arduino has when you turn on the VESCs and the code does not run properly. What it does is it resets the Arduino and makes it so that the code runs properly as soon as you turn it on. This is only necessary if you have issues with the Arduino powering up. A lot of people don't seem to have that issue, but for me personally I did, so that was just the quick fix that we found. Just thought I would mention it because this is the parts gathering episode, so you may want to factor in this. If you're already ordering your parts, you may want to order a small ceramic capacitor to go with everything, just in case it happens to you too. For the current build that I have, you will need a 220 microfarad capacitor as well as a 5 kilo ohm resistor. I'll be using a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor personally for this, but that's just what they had available. I'll explain why it's not too important and what other options are in a second. And for the switch, I was going to try and use some 12 millimeter vertical slide switches I got from Amazon, but it turns out my school had some of these little black micro switches available in the stock room. We'll see them in a bit when we move on to the next part. But just try and find some sort of small slide switch to be able to power your remote on and off. Now, the reason I'm using a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor has to do with the LiPo charging circuit. It turns out that the board by default charges at about 1 amp. 
The LiPo battery, however, is only rated to charge at 400 milliamps. So in order to change the charging speed, we'll need to change one of the resistors on the charging board. In this graphic, you can see it right here and the corresponding charge rates with the different ratings of resistors. So with my 4.7 kilo ohm resistor, I should be charging somewhere in the realm of 260-ish milliamps, 265, maybe 270. You can pretty safely go as far as 3 kilo ohms for 400 milliamp charging rate, but I don't want to risk damaging my battery, and I don't mind taking just a little bit longer. Now some other things that you may want to consider are some wrist straps, and a cable to make it easy in order to remove your receiver should it need maintenance or repair. I bought some of the blue, some of these blue straps to go with the blue accent theme that I have going and these specific motor servo cables because they come with both ends and it should be compatible with the Pulse Echo making it simple for me to swap in my new receiver. You might also want to consider purchasing a different type of cable port to use on the bottom of your remote. So I'm referring to uh, a USB-C connector instead of a micro USB type B connector. Solid Geek Design is built for micro USB type B, but USB-C is the new standard, so you may want to consider trying to get that port instead. I'll be attempting to build a lightning port into the bottom of mine since I carry an iPhone on the daily basis but we'll see how that goes. Moving on, the first set of files you're gonna to wanna to download are the STL files from Solid Geek's Thingiverse account. These are the 3D models that you will want to print in order to create the housing of the controller. I downloaded and printed the whole set, but you only really need to print one of each type of part. So that means the top shell, bottom shell, springy lever, dead man switch, and then one throttle knob, and pick one type of plate. With those selected, you can either send them off to be printed at a printing service of your, of your choice, or send it off to your personal printer to have it finished. If you check the Firefly GitHub Wiki, you can see some recommendations on how to print the files. Next up, we'll be visiting the main branch of the GitHub. This is the page with all of the code that you'll need in order to program your remote transmitter and receiver. Go ahead and download and unzip the contents. Inside the folder, you'll find the Arduino program files, electrical schematics, and a README. In the README file, you'll see something about needing to manually install the BESC UART control from Rolling Gecko. So let's grab that too while we're at it. All right. Now we've got all of the code and libraries and assorted files we'll need, but we still need the program that will load the code onto the Arduino boards. A quick Google search for the Arduino IDE sent me here, so let's grab this and install it now. All right, with that installed, there we go. Let's go ahead and load up both the transmitter.ino and receiver.ino. We will start with the transmitter first. We have to edit a small string in the code in both files. According to SolidGeek, the way the code for these transmitters work is that the radio transmit and receive using a specific pipe, I believe is the correct term. Someone should chime in with the proper terminology in the comments, but here's the string right here. You're going to want to randomize this string in order to make the remote more secure and remove the likelihood that you and someone else with the same pipe will interfere with each other's boards. For the sake of keeping my pipe secure, I'm just going to leave it as it is for this tutorial and change it for my personal board when I actually use it. The other thing we need to do is manually install the VESC UART control library. Just do that real quick.
And with that, we're all set to move on to part two of this guide. Once you've received all of your parts, join me in the next video to see what you need to do in order to assemble your very own Firefly. Until next time, toodles.